This is 2013's The Incredible Burt Wonderstone. Warning, spoilers ahead. We open up to a young Burt as he runs away from a bully in 1982. He manages to keep away for a good while, but eventually little Burt gets caught. The bully tells him that no one will ever like him, and he leaves him there to think about that. It really hits home for Burt, and he heads inside to sulk. He calls out for his mom, but when he gets to the dining room, he finds a present with a note on it. Apparently, it's Burt's birthday, and she has to work. Mom of the Year over here left him one present on the table and told him to bake his own cake. At least he'll be used to taking care of himself when he gets older. After making and eating his own birthday cake, Bert opens up his one present to find a magic kit. He couldn't be happier, and he opens the box immediately. He throws on the tape that came with the kit, and he watches Rance Holloway introduce him to the world of magic. Bert is amazed by everything that he sees, and Rance tells him that everyone loves a magician. The next day at school, Bert practices his magic tricks, and he catches the eye of Anton, who's another outcast. After bonding at lunch, Anton comes over to Bert's house to watch more magic tricks, and he ends up becoming his partner as they come up with brand new tricks to try. When two misfits put their minds together, they usually come up with some of the craziest schemes, especially if they're smart. Needless to say, this friendship turns into a business partnership as they perform all sorts of magic on a Vegas stage. Is magic even around anymore? All I remember was watching Chris Angel when I was a kid. Over the years, their act grows and grows, and eventually they get offered the big stage by Doug, who tries to split them up first. Bert stands his ground and says that the two of them are a team, and Doug ends up signing them anyways. Their show sells out their own theater 10 years later still, and they show their audience their version of Hangman after introducing the audience to Nicole. Nicole would sue for sexual harassment so quickly now. Is it bad that I'm sitting here wondering how they do certain tricks like I'm a 10-year-old boy watching my first magic trick? Whenever magic happens, you can't help but wonder. How did they switch? After going backstage, it turns out that Bert and Anton aren't as friendly as they used to be, and Nicole is tired of dealing with Bert. Bert doesn't think that she's that hard to replace, though, and he picks Jane out of the crew to make the new assistant. When they go back on stage for the next trick, they call Jane out to do her part, and she's insanely awkward. She knows the whole routine, though, I'll give her that. It takes a lot of skill to be able to just jump right into things. Of course, Bert wastes no time in trying to sleep with Jane. Jane turns him down immediately, and she gets back to the show. When it comes time for the next trick, Bert picks a volunteer out of the audience, and he ends up taking her back to his place after the show. Bert has completely lost all interest in his job, love life, and generally everything. In the morning, the girl wakes up in his giant bed to find a file waiting for her at the other end of the bed. She crawls over to it to find an autographed picture waiting for her. Meanwhile, Anton goes to the bar, and he watches Rick trick the bartender with his basic magic. Suddenly, Bert joins them on the other end of the bar, and Lucius can't believe that Bert and Anton are in the same room at the same time. The more Rick talks about his tricks, it becomes clear that Bert is old-fashioned, and Lucius mentions that his tigers are getting a little bitey. They get interrupted when they hear cheering outside, and Jim Carrey plays Steve Gray, who's the most fantastic imitation of Chris Angel I've ever seen. I actually want to watch Steve Gray more than Chris Angel. Steve's magic is definitely different from Bert's traditional style, as he gets punched by a volunteer, cuts the swelling open, and pulls a card out of his face. Bert decides to introduce himself after Steve finishes his show, and he compliments him on how good his disgusting show was. Bert can't believe that Steve doesn't know who he is, and Steve gives him the cold shoulder before Bert can invite him to their show. Later, Bert gets a massage in his room, and he watches as Steve does even more insane tricks on his TV show. The next time he and Anton go to perform in their theater, they can't believe that the audience isn't sold out, but they continue their act as best as possible. That would have to be depressing. To go from being the hottest act to the one that no one cares to see would be depressing. After the show, Bert and Anton go to Doug's office to discuss their poor ticket sales, and Doug mentions that Steve is supposedly the future of magic. When he turns on the TV, he sees that Steve is trying to hold his pee in for 12 days straight. Doug explains that he's opening a new casino and hotel, and he only wants a new and fresh act to headline this new theater. Bert seems incapable of trying anything new, but Anton comes up with a fresh stunt to try. After some time, Anton's hotbox stunt is ready to go, and for some reason, Bert is deciding to wear his outfit to stay in a plexiglass box high above the Vegas street for a whole week. Before they go up, Jane reminds them that all they have to do is literally nothing. How long do you think the stunt ends up lasting? A day? Eight hours? No, 20 minutes. 20 whole minutes before Bert loses his freaking mind. Even if he calmed down, he ends up breaking the box and hangs on to Anton's legs. At least Anton isn't wearing embarrassing boxers. Bert ends up climbing on Anton to get back in the box, kicks him to the ground, and falls right on top of him. Anton quits while he's being carried away by paramedics, and Bert can't look past his own selfish needs. Later, Bert takes a bath, and Jane comes over to talk to him about the show. 
She doesn't know how he plans to do the show without his partner, but Bert is positive that he doesn't need Anton for any of his acts. Well, it turns out that he doesn't have Jane either, because she just quit. The next day, Bert goes to do his show to an even smaller audience, and the acts proved to be impossible with just one person. If someone actually performed like this, they would keep their act just because of how bad it is. I would definitely pay to watch someone embarrass themselves this badly. After the show, Doug tells Bert that he can't keep his act alone, but Bert swears that he doesn't need Doug and his hotel either. After this meeting, Bert goes to meet with his manager, Dom, and he finds out that he has no money left after investing it in Mexican bottled water and a Titanic-themed restaurant. His lavish lifestyle doesn't help either. All he has left is $248, and he starts packing up some of his most beloved possessions. Later, he calls Jane to see if he can crash at her place for a couple of nights, and after a guilt trip from Bert, she lets him stay for a night. They sit down to eat dinner, and Bert can't believe that he's fallen this low. Later, they go into her living room to look at pictures of her grandmother, and Jane tells him that she's the reason that she's in love with magic. Does Steve Carell play Michael from The Office in every movie? I'm literally getting flashbacks to that show while watching this. He gets so sexist that she kicks him out. Can't really blame her. Bert ends up finding himself a cheap small hotel room, and he spends the entire next day calling people to get a job. No such luck there, but he does end up getting a job as a product demonstrator at Big Lots. One night, Steve performs one of his greatest stunts yet by spending the night on red hot coals. Steve's proof that people are gluttons for punishment. I can't blame them. I'm so invested in his tricks. The next day, Bert finds out that the retirement facility is hiring for an entertainer, and he decides to suck it up and take the job. Once there, he finds out that most of the people here are old performers from the strip, and the nurse doesn't think it'll be long before he ends up there. Bert goes over to Grace to perform a magic trick for her, but he doesn't tell her that he's a magician first. After ruining her day, he goes to perform for the entire audience, but someone in the back is ruining his tricks. The man gets up and walks out, and Bert decides to call him out for ruining his performance. The man calls him out for not having any joy in his magic anymore, and Bert finally realizes that the man is Rance Holloway. Bert tells him that he's the reason he got into magic, but Rance wants nothing to do with that lifestyle anymore. That night, Bert watches the news, and he sees a piece on what Anton is doing. Anton is apparently going to different countries to pass out magic kits to kids with no food or water. He also talks about how the people in the area are hooked on a drug called Kratom Leaf that knocks them out for an hour. And I'm amazed that I've never heard of such a drug. Is that real? Not that I'm looking for it or anything. At the end of the segment, the reporter asks about his falling out with Bert, and he talks about how much joy he had when Bert and him started. This reinvigorates Bert, and the next day he goes back to the retirement home to practice magic with Rance. Rance does a trick where a bird flies out of a salt shaker, and Bert feels a sense of awe. Rance tells him that this feeling is why he started magic to begin with. When Bert asks Rance why he left, Rance explains that he didn't like how he felt with the big shows anymore, and Bert completely understands where he's coming from. That night, Bert humbles himself a little bit, and he gets a call from Doug. When they meet up, Doug tells him that he has a performing gig for him, and it turns out to be his son's birthday party. He really, really humbles himself because he takes the job for $500. I mean, $500 is $500, though. He tries to convince Rance to be his partner, but he has to take him to a Steve Gray performance to show him what's considered magic now. Yep, that'll do it. Bert also finds out that Jane is Steve's new assistant. After a rugged run-in in the magician's bar, Rance is fully on board, and they start practicing at the retirement home the next day. They amaze everyone with the simplest tricks, and eventually Jane shows up to visit her grandmother, Grace. She's amazed to see Bert doing something like entertaining the residents, and they sit to catch up. Jane can tell that Bert isn't the same man that she kicked out a month ago, and he apologizes for everything he did wrong. Jane loves this new Bert, and she spends the rest of the day with him. They talk about Bert's childhood while they walk around the strip, and he tells her about the birthday party he's performing at. Kids' birthday parties really bring the magic back to where we all remember it. Seriously, do magicians even exist anymore? At the birthday party, Bert is finishing setting up, and he calls Rance to see if he's going to be there on time. Just then, Jane shows up, and Bert tells her about how nervous he really is. She assures him that Rance will be there. When Doug thanks everyone for coming out, he mentions that he's holding a contest to see who will be headlining his new hotel, and he mentions that Steve Gray is in the audience. Right after that, he turns everyone's attention to Bert. That's a tough comment to follow, but Bert pulls it off pretty well. That is until Steve decides to turn this child's birthday party into a big contest. Steve even tops his big puppy trick at the end. Poor puppy number one ends up in Bert's pants. Poor puppy. After Bert wanders off, Jane tells Steve that she can't believe that he couldn't let Bert just have one show, and she walks off to be with Bert. Just then, Bert gets a call, and he can't believe what he's hearing. The two of them head to the hospital to find Rance in bed, and he can't believe that he missed the show. It turns out that he had a stroke, and he asks how the show went. They lie and say that the show went well, 
and Rance tells him that if he had known how fun it was to work with a partner, he would have done it a long time ago. Then, Rance performs his last disappearing act, and Jane and Bert play along. That evening, Bert meets up with Anton, and they talk about how much they miss each other. Later, they go back to Bert's hotel room, and Jane joins them to go over some potential tricks. Apparently, they decide to go with the disappearing audience trick that they could never figure out, and they use Kratom Leaf to potentially drug an entire audience. This movie just turned into an herbal Breaking Bad movie. They're cooking up knockout gas in their seedy little hotel room. When it comes time to leave for the showcase, Bert tells Jane that they want her to be their opening act as a partner if they end up getting the gig. She's so overwhelmed with joy that they end up kissing and getting together. After the night of their life, they head to Doug's new casino for the real night of their life at the showcase. So far at the showcase, the acts are mediocre, but Steve Gray's up next. What's he gonna do this time? This has to be the one big topper over of all tricks. He doesn't disappoint. Ladies and gentlemen, Steve Gray is here to drill a hole in his head. That's right, you heard me right. Needless to say, he does it. It doesn't end very well, though. I don't think Steve will be headlining anymore. Up next is Bert and Anton, and they come out to talk about how they started in Magic. They announce that they're going to perform the one trick that they could never accomplish, but they're going to do it tonight. They play Rance Holloway's tape, but it turns out to be Rance himself. Suddenly, the theater goes black, and when everyone comes to, they find themselves in an empty field outside of Las Vegas. Bert and Anton take their bow, and they hug it out for accomplishing the impossible. No, it's not impossible, it's illegal. Doug tells them that they got the gig, and Anton and Bert drug the audience again to get them back to the theater. Do not try this at home, people. In time, Bert and Anton get their new show at the new hotel, and Jane joins them. Then they show us exactly what goes into drugging the audience to transport them. Everyone gets a label for their seat number, and the crew drag them out to a truck where they toss them in. So the whole crew is guilty of accomplishing. Fantastic. Imagine going to this magic show, getting drugged, transported, amazed, and waking up the next morning feeling like you got rolled down a flight of stairs. Then the credits roll. This is an underrated Steve Carell movie that really didn't get any publicity but it's definitely worth a watch. Give it a shot. Thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this one. Comment what you think I should watch next and I'll see you in the next video.